tiers here. So I talked about lighting these pillars, but I would also try and have one of those up lights here underneath the window. Again, that's shining fairly upright because I want to throw light up here. The only difference, I would probably upgrade the lamp a little bit um, from a standard four watt LED, uh, which is what comes in it to a five watt, which we call a 35 watt equivalent. Uh, the reason being is because I want to be able to shoot that light up to the second story. Hey guys, it's Cal from The Lighting Doctor here. I hope you guys enjoy this video with some more great landscape lighting tips. To learn more about landscape lighting, go and check out our website at lightingdoctor.ca or if you want to see what a real quality landscape light should look like, go and check out our Try It Before You Buy It offer where you can get a premium quality fixture at a discounted rate with your very own battery pack so you can go and test out how that light's going to look and feel what a real premium quality light should look like. So go and check us out at lightingdoctor.ca or go watch more videos on YouTube just by searching for The Lighting Doctor. Hey, Patrick, uh, yeah, thanks for reaching out. Uh, send in your pictures here. Um, I'm glad uh, we were referred to you. I think you got a um, great little property here for uh, some landscape lighting. So I'll show you just a, you know, a couple of really simple things that I think you could do, um, as well as a couple things you may want to do. It, it just kind of depends. But, um, you know, the one thing, I'll just kind of show you an example uh, so you get a visual. But I want to talk a little bit about lighting the kind of some of the stone columns and stuff you have here. Obviously, the garage, um, the driveway is already built, so you may not be able to do some of these options. But I do like the idea of highlighting some of the second story peaks. Um, you said kind of the trees on the corner. So this is a, a good visual of what I think um, you could get your house to look like. But really what I would do is I would just start with. Um, some up lights like these in a couple different areas and it would mainly be on kind of these columns that you have here across the front I would kind of have four of those just behind where you have the bricks um, the real key is you don't want to bring them too far back you just want to have them maybe 12 to 18 inches back and having them shine more upright so they get the nice stonework you have as well as the columns and that light kind of hits the top here um, and it almost kind of lights this whole archway gives you a little bit of reflective light back down in the bed so I definitely like doing that on those four columns that you have there um, depending on what you guys decide to plant here what you could do and a lot of times people will one of two things really is either you can use some path and garden lights and I like it because um, it creates a contrast between some up lighting and then some down lighting so you can either have like two path lights in here and then maybe you have like two path lights in here that help light the walkway but then also light the beds down below that you're going to have a little bit the other option is if you're going to kind of plant some unique plants or unique statues or features in between where you're going to have those columns that's where you might want to use a wash light instead to highlight that uh, very similar to an up light just as a softer wider angle more subtle light so I like both of those options. Um, it just kind of depends what you're going to be putting there. If you are going to have some new taller trees going up in the corners, um, you definitely want to get some accent lights on those. It just helps round out the whole viewing angle. And I'm assuming you mean here and over here. Um, you're going to do that. So it would create a nice balance. If you have those same up lights that you're going to use over here, um, the real key and what I see a lot of people make the mistake of is they try and bring those lights too far back and shine them at the canopy. Whereas really, if you can get them a little closer to the base and have them shining more upright, uh, you're going to get a better effect. So that's really what I would do for the front of the house there. Um, same thing. I'm assuming there'd probably be a tree or something going on here. If not, um, this would be another one where I would still throw an up light on here just to match, uh, the lighting of the columns that you've kind of done over there. Uh, again, depending what's going over here, I'm, and I'll just show you this example, but I'm still a fan of even on an area like that where it's just siding it is still throwing some accent lights because it kind of highlights that a little bit too, but it also throws light up to the top soffits and it kind of makes it glow and it rounds out the viewing angle too. So now it's not just the front of your house that lets lit up as you're coming to the side of the house. Um, you also have that lit up and then, uh, you know, example of how you kind of have that corner uh, tree light here. And then sometimes what I like doing too is depending what you're going to be putting here, sometimes if it's like smaller shrubs and stuff, I like using those up lights and having them a little bit behind. So say this was on the side of the house, I might have that here. So it's shining up to catch the house. Obviously if it's closer, it's better. Um, but then it also kind of creates some shadows along the side of the house from whatever maybe small shrub or flowers or whatever you have there. Um, and it can be a nice way to kind of create a, a cool little effect. Um, I just want to run around to the back before I come back to a couple things in the front here. But um, in the back, yeah, I 
I don't think you need to do um, a ton here. Uh, two options for deck lighting and stuff. Obviously, you know, if you have some um, exterior trees and stuff that you're going to be looking out from the deck, you might want to throw an up light on those. A light that I like using on any kind of deck area. Sometimes people will put like post lights and stuff on these guys, um, which you can definitely do. The only thing is it just gets tricky to hide the wire, especially because, you know, you're going to have to run it down there. So I might not do that. Um, but you very well could too, because you can always just kind of maybe run the wire up underneath the stairs, get it underneath here, and then you can just kind of drill through and you can put some post lights, um, even on the other side. Uh, I don't have a ex good example of a post light, uh, in front of me here, but like a lot of times those little half moon lights works on an area like this. Um, and sometimes we'll do that if you wanted to have light up there. So I might put maybe one or two, even on these posts, but on that side there. And if you wanted to maybe on on two posts on the side here, but I wouldn't go too crazy with that. Another light I like using, um, more so for these areas and the stairs is these hardscape lights. Um, you can get these in like a brown finish, um, a white finish. The only thing is sometimes uh, with right now with everything that's going on, it's taking a while to get some of these in. Um, but these are a nice light because they just, they tuck away and they hide really nice under like ledges and stuff like this around decks, um, under stairs and that kind of stuff. They just kind of disappear. So I really like them as opposed to some of the other deck lighting options um, where you have a light that's shining out and it kind of blinds you. But what I would do in an area like this, and especially if this is like a sitting area, um, I like using those lights and I might throw one um, kind of underneath this little section here and another one over here that just kind of highlight down this way. And then it creates some nice light on the sitting area. And same thing, you could put one over on this uh, side here and it would help light this patio area. The nice thing is it's not a super overwhelming light, but you also don't see that. So it's a nice way to create a subtle light um, to the patio area down below here. And then, you know, I might even throw one over here as well, um, because then that's also going to help highlight the stairs a little bit so that, you know, just a little safer when you're walking down at night. So, I mean, maybe just adding four of those under cap lights um, around the deck is a really nice feature and it kind of makes that whole area stand out. And I would almost do that before I would put any kind of post lights and stuff on here. Um, uh, just because it's nice sometimes when you, you know, you don't need light everywhere and you're usually going to have, you know, some kind of light from the house or, or who knows um, back here when you're sitting, but down here, it's probably going to be very dark. So it's nice to have that little added feature. So um, that was kind of the only other thing I did want to mention is like I showed you in that other um, <clears throat> picture is kind of highlighting these second uh, tiers here. So I talked about lighting these pillars, but I would also try and have one of those up lights here underneath the window. Again, that's shining fairly upright because I want to throw light up here. The only difference I would probably upgrade the lamp a little bit um, from a standard four watt LED. Uh, which is what comes in it to a five watt, which we call a 35 watt equivalent. Uh, the reason being is because I want to be able to shoot that light up to the second story. Um, and then I might also look at trying to get some of these. I think if you did that, that would be enough. Um, sometimes you could light this section, but I don't think you necessarily need to here. But over on the garage here, this is where you might want to use something called a gutter mount, uh, which is one of these guys that fits in the gutter that you can mount a light into. And what would look really cool is if you actually mounted one, say on this gutter uh, and this gutter and had them shining um, to this middle peak. And then you've kind of got this peak lit, you've got this peak lit. And then, I mean, you could always add one over here too, that kind of gets this peak and it would really make things stand out. Um, on this one, I'd probably try and throw it kind of over here and have it angled this way. This one will be lit from this side. And then you've kind of got this one lit this way. Um, that would be something that would really elevate the whole landscape design. It's actually pretty easy to get the wire up there too, because we'll usually just run it, um, you know, just right up the downspout. All the connections are waterproof, so you can make them in the gutter. You use your mount, you screw your light in, and you're all set to go. So uh, hopefully that gives you some good ideas. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, we can always help you design a kit, or um, you can always play around on the website, add the different lights to your cart, and just kind of go from there. But uh, more than happy to help with any other questions you have. Thanks, Patrick. So I'll just share with you guys one little trick, um, something called a hex baffle. Uh, where we use these is just to deflect the glare off the up light. So sometimes if you have an up light like this, that's close to an area where people are going to be walking, um, it's not necessarily going to be pointing in their, in their face or in their eyes or anything, but just to help keep that light a little bit more 
concentrated when they're looking at it from an angle. We're gonna use something called a hex baffle. It basically just slides underneath the cap of your light and goes over the lens, or sorry, over the light and under the lens and snaps back on. Um, and then all that's gonna do is just deflect the light that's being uh, maybe portrayed that way. So that somebody looking down, they're not gonna see a light shining right up in their, in your eyes. So this is a great, uh, a great little tip to use anytime you have a high traffic area where people might be walking by the light so they're not shining directly into their eyes. Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video presentation with some great tips and tools on how to go and properly and effectively light up your landscape. And be sure if you want your own free consultation video, just send me an email at cal at lightingdoctor.ca with a few pictures of your property and we'll get back to you with some really cool ideas and ways to go and effectively light your property. And be sure to watch the videos after this one for more tips on how to install landscape lighting as well as how to light up your landscape the best way possible.